This is where we left off in the previous movie and we have a ball bouncing down some stairs. What we want to do now is manipulate the keyframes we've created using F curves. The F in F curves stands for function. They can definitely be frustrating if you haven't quite got the hang of them, but hopefully after you've watched this movie, you'll be totally fine with them. I'm going to bring up the dope sheet here and you've seen we've done that before. We've touched on this mode here and this is where we want to be F curve mode. So what I'm really interested in is the Y position for the most part. You can also look at the X, which should not be doing anything because it isn't traveling from side to side. And the Z is doing something as well, which we'll look at later. You know what? Because the X is doing nothing, we can just delete that track. So select it and delete it. There's no point having that extra data there if we don't need to use it. So I like working with the timeline quite big. Normally I have two monitors. Another way of working would be to switch to the animate view and then you can get your timeline and your view here and it's all in one setup. I'm just going to switch back to the standard view and press shift F3, get up the timeline, tab to go into F curve mode and just once again highlight the Y position. We'll just scale this down a bit so we can see what we're doing. So. The F curve represents the interpolation between the keys and we can see we're getting a sense of that motion if we just follow it down. One thing that can be useful when working with F curves is to create a snapshot of where you were and you can see what kind of progress you've made. So if we come to the F curve menu here and choose make snapshot, create snapshot one and then we will say view snapshot one. Now we won't be able to see anything because it looks exactly like our F curve at the moment. But as soon as we start manipulating points, and if I just zoom in and you can move using one and zoom in using two, it might be quite hard to see. You can see that gray line there, which is our original motion path. So we will try and use it as a guide. So let's start by manipulating some of these handles and all I've done just like with splines which we just learned about we can just select a point and grab a handle and move it around like so. so we want to create a kind of bounce so we probably want a different interpolation between these points so we can use the shift key to just drag one handle and affect that so we probably want this ball to come down bounce and then bounce off quite sharply like so so you can just change those handles and now because they're broken, we don't have to hold the shift key every single time. We've just broken them once. So let's just go through, break the handles, move these up, just try and get a sense of what's going on. I'm just going to work my way along using one to move the timeline. And we'll play back and just see if we're getting any improvement. And I think we are. I think maybe this is happening. There's a long gap here. It's kind of floating in midair. So what can we do to fix that? As we saw in the first movie, we can actually change the speed by bringing the keyframes closer. So an easy way to do that is to come back into key mode. I'm going to just pause the playback there and we can just use these buttons here as well to zoom out. And what I want to do is just select and drag a selection a little box around all the keyframes I'd like to move. And if I move my mouse up into the top part here, you can see the icon change. Now I can just move those back closer to that first keyframe. So I just come back into F curve mode here. Just frame that up a bit. You can also select a couple of keyframes and just frame the selected ones as well. Now we can just modify the interpolation probably a bit too violent now. So I'm just going to pause. Move this back and you can see we're actually getting some more points on the spline here. Another thing we could do is use the Z value to making sure we've got our first keyframe selected. We could actually just change that value so it comes in a bit closer and just set a new keyframe. So back in F-curve mode on the Y-axis, you can see that I had to keep fixing 
this point. And that can be quite frustrating and a bit of a waste of time as well. So if I choose Command D, go to my project settings, go to key interpolation and choose this overdub mode, check that on. That should stop our F curves from resetting themselves once we make changes. So it's also useful to note that you can turn that on. So I'm going to go ahead and make a few tweaks to this and we'll come back once I've got it into a happy place. So now if we play back through the animation, it's looking a lot better. And I had to go in and take out all, pretty much all the points on the Z. And you can see, if you just if we zoom in a bit, you can see that snapshot we took earlier of the Z has changed quite a lot. And so has the Y as well. There's plenty to do. That's the thing about animating. If we come back out to the perspective view, we can see the ball is definitely bouncing down a bit better now. There's a load of things that are missing from making this a really nice animation, such as some rotation of the ball, some squash and stretch, which would be achieved through scaling. So why not have a go and animate some of those properties using the methods that you've just learned? So the main takeaway from this is that we can take keyframes that we'd set previously, finesse them using the F-curve mode in the timeline.